Welcome back to Mode Bespoke. I'm Atenas. For today's project, we're going to be working on a cute summer drawstring bag. Now, this is going to be worked in Tunisian stitches, so that's going to be fun. Let's get started. All right, so let's talk about the construction of this bag. We're gonna begin with the initial chain, which is gonna determine the width of our bag. Now this stitch is worked in odd multiples. If you're gonna be using the size two yarn, like the one that I used for this bag at least, you're gonna chain 41 stitches to get the same measurement as I have here, which I'll post the measurements here on the screen in just a moment. Um, if you're gonna make the bag using a thicker, a thicker yarn, which the sample I showed you here with the stitch, so this one, I did this using a medium weight yarn. So this is a size four medium weight. Since it is bigger, I did I, I used a 6.5 millimeter hook. So for this one, I used 5.5 for a size two or a sport weight yarn. For a medium weight yarn, so a number four medium weight yarn, I used a 6.5 millimeter hook. Um, if you're gonna be using a thicker weight yarn, you're gonna crochet less stitches so I did 31 stitches so it's a chain 31 to get the same width as this bag again you can adjust this however you want so make it as wide as you want so long as you work in even multiples you can go ahead and chain however many stitches you want now for my sample I'm just going to make a small sample of 19 stitches and we're going to begin with a slip knot so let me grab my yarn and we're going to begin by wrapping the yarn around two fingers like so you're going to insert your hook behind the top loop or the front loop, I should say, and then the back one, you're gonna pull that through, and you tighten the knot by pulling on the individual threads. All right, now once we've got that uh, chain, either the 41, 31, or whatever odd multiple you want, for those of you that don't know how to chain, you're going to wrap the yarn around your hook like this, so pass it through the back. You're gonna pull this top loop through this bottom loop for one, so that's one chain. Yarn over, pull through one right here, for two, yarn over, pull through, three, yarn over, pull through, four, and so forth until you get whatever width you want for your bag. So you got five, six. All right, once you have crocheted your chain, we're gonna begin with a foundation row. Now this is a standard foundation row for Tunisian crochet. We're going to skip the first stitch as we already have it on our hook. Go into that second chain. You're going to insert your hook into the stitch, yarn over, and you're gonna pull up a loop. Leave this loop on your hook. Go into the next one, insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop, leave it on your hook, and then insert your hook, yarn over, pull up a loop. Repeat this in every single one of the stitches of the chain. You should end up with the same number of loops on your hook as you chain number of stitches. So if my chain is 19 stitches, I should end up with 19 loops on my hook, or you know whatever number that was, 41, 31, whatever it was. At the end of the foundation row, you should have that same number of loops on your hook. All right, now once you reach the end and you've cast on all of your stitches, your hook should look like this. You're gonna work a regular return pass and that's only for this one row. So for the, the rest of your rows, starting row one and throughout the rest of your work, the return pass is gonna be different. But for the foundation row return pass, you're gonna yarn over and pull this loop through this next loop right here. So if you're looking at your hook like this, it's gonna be that first loop on your hook. So you're gonna yarn over and pull through one. And now for the rest of the loops, you're gonna yarn over and pull through two. So here are the two loops. We're gonna yarn over and pull through one and then two. Yarn over, pull through one, two. Yarn over, pull through two, and so forth until you are left with just the one loop on your hook. All right, once you've completed your foundation row, so here it is. For those of you that are new to the world of Tunisian crochet, you can see all of your little vertical stitches, which are these. So here's a vertical stitch, here's a vertical stitch, here's another one. These vertical stitches are made up of two loops, two legs, whatever you want to call them, two threads, whatever. You've got the one in the back. So this is the back leg, and this is the front leg. We are always going to skip the vertical stitch, or the first vertical stitch, there we go, because see, you've already got it on your hook. So you skip the first one, at least for this project. That's not true for every single project, but it is for this one. For row number one, we're gonna cast on using 
the chain space, so the chain space between the vertical stitches and the actual vertical stitches. We're going to use a Tunisian simple stitch. So beginning on this first chain space, you are going to cast on. So for those of you that are using the written pattern, it's just the cast on. So here's the first one. Right in between vertical stitch number one and number two, you're going to insert your hook, yarn over, and pull up a loop. So you have cast on one. You're going to Tunisian simple stitch in that second vertical stitch of the row. So to Tunisian simple stitch, you're going to insert your hook behind this top leg of the vertical stitch, yarn over, and pull up a loop. You're going to move on to the chain space between the second vertical stitch and the third, and you're going to cast on. So insert your hook into the chain space, and then Tunisian simple stitch in vertical stitch number three. Cast on into the chain space. Tunisian simple stitch in vertical stitch number four. And you're going to repeat this throughout the rest of the row. So notice that I'm using the chain space. So it's right here, not the actual chain. So here's this, here's the chain. So here's the stitch. I'm not crocheting into the chain. I'm crocheting into the chain space. So that is the space right down here. So once you've cast all of these on, um, we'll begin the first return pass and that's going to be the return pass you're going to use for the rest of the work. So let me cast on these stitches and I'll be right back in just a moment. All right, once you have cast on your row, your, uh, I guess your hook should look like this. For those of you that require loop counts, um, I ended up, so since my initial chain was 19, I ended up with 37 loops, which is almost twice as many. So it would have been 38 if it would have been twice as many, but it's one less than two times the amount of chains that you made. So there you go. Um, I don't normally count loops, so <laughs> I had to count it several times. I was like, okay, let's get this, let's get this figured out. Cause I know some folks like that. All right. So here's the return pass you're going to use for the rest of the project. All right. So you're always going, going to begin with the yarn over and then pull through one. Now the rest of the row, you're going to do yarn over, pull through four, and then yarn over, pull through two. So four, two, four, two, four, two, until you get to the end. And the end is going to be yarn over, pull through two. So we're going to yarn over and pull through four loops. So we have one, two, three, four, and then yarn over, pull through two. So yarn over, pull through one, two, and then yarn over, pull through four. So it's yarn over, pull through one, two, three, four, and then yarn over, pull through two. So one, two, and so forth until you complete the rest of the row. So it's always four, and then two, four, two, four, two. So that's going to be the return pass for this project from row number, what, what is this, row number one? So from the end of row number one throughout the rest of your work. So I'll complete this one and then we'll begin on row number two. All right, so I'm at the end of my return pass and I just got that yarn over, pull through three, or four, sorry, that's yarn over, pull through four, and then yarn over, pull through two. And there we go. All right, so from row number two on, this is going to be the row you're going to repeat until you complete the length of your fabric. And here's how it goes. You see this chain space between this little cluster right here and the first one? We're going to be crocheting into that chain space. And then you're going to Tunisian simple stitch into these three stitches. So I don't know if you can, you can't really see it too clearly, but so this group right here, this little cluster is three vertical stitches together. So it's one, two, three. You're going to Tunisian stitch these three together. So let's begin with that cast on. So in this chain space between the first vertical stitch and this little cluster, we're going to insert our hook, yarn over and pull up a loop. Leave that on your hook. And now we've got this little group of three. So we are going to Tunisian stitch three together. <laughs> That's a mouthful. Okay. So we're going to do this by inserting our hook behind the top leg of all three of these vertical stitches. So you can kind of see it here. There you go. So there's all three of them. Yarn over and pull up a loop. And now we've got this section. So you've got this chain space right here, this vertical stitch right there, and this chain space. You're going to crochet into all of these. So in this first chain space, you're going to cast on. And then you Tunisian simple stitch into this vertical stitch, cast on into the chain space, 
and now we're back to the little cluster and then you repeat the entire sequence over again. So Tunisian simple stitch three together. So right there. And then cast on into the chain space. So you'll see this just as a cast on in the written pattern. Tunisian simple stitch, cast on, and then Tunisian simple stitch three together. And then you just continue. So you repeat this over and over. The return pass is the same one I showed you for the previous row. So let me continue to cast these on and I'll show you that return pass again. All right, here I'm at the end of the row. So I just have to finish casting on these remaining stitches. And then where I normally lose my stitch count is after this little cluster of three. So when I do the Tunisian stitch three together, I would forget this last cast on. So that's gonna be in this chain space and then the final stitch of the row. So cast on into this chain space. So right here at the end. And then into that final stitch of the row. Oh, there we go. And there's our row. And now for the return pass. So the return pass begins with yarn over, pull through one. And then it's yarn over, pull through four, yarn over, pull through two. So yarn over, pull through four. That's one, two, three, four. And then through two. And then yarn over, pull through four, yarn over, pull through two yarn over, pull through four, and so forth. Now, if you're watching and you're kind of paying attention to, to the stitching, whenever you do that yarn over, pull through four, you get that little cluster of three. This is the yarn over, pull through two, which is just the single vertical stitch, and then yarn over, pull through four, two, four. As you add rows, you're gonna notice that these all stack up. The same happens with these vertical stitches, they all line up. So it'll be very easy to tell if you missed a stitch. So that will kind of just help keep you on track. So if for whatever reason you put your work down and you lose track of where you're at, just take a look at whether it's the cluster or the vertical stitch and you should be able to pick up just fine. So complete the rest of your row. Now from here on out, you're just gonna repeat this same row and return pass for the length of your project. So once you complete this here, here we go, and you just begin again. So in this chain space, you cast on and then Tunisian simple stitch three together, chain space, Tunisian simple stitch, chain space, and you just continue. Or I guess I should say cast on because that's how I have it written on the pattern. So it's cast on, Tunisian stitch three together, cast on, simple stitch, cast on, repeat. So for those of you that don't know how to do a color switch, I'll show you how to do this real quick. Um, and that's just because this blue bag has one. So leave a long tail end of thread and then you're going to loop on your hook. Now, if you remember when you begin the return pass, you always do the yarn over and then pull through one. Yeah, this is gonna be that yarn over. So you've already got the yarn over, you're just going to pull through one, which is gonna be the first of the teal or blue mint. I don't know what color this is. Pull it through the first loop on your hook. And then you're gonna complete the rest of the return pass. So yarn over, pull through four. So that's one, two, three, and four. And yarn over, pull through two yarn over, pull through four, yarn over, pull through two, and so forth until you complete the return pass. And that's it. That's all you need to do to switch colors. It's really that simple. But uh, feel free to switch colors as many times as you want. Make it as colorful as you want. And then, you know, just show me some photos and tag me on Instagram if you do that. But uh, yeah, so that was fun. Okay, let's move on to the rest of the pattern. Complete repetitions of, what is it, row number two, until your fabric measures a length of about 22 inches. That was a total of 70 rows, or not 70, 79 rows, and then row number 80 would be the bind off. So now to complete the bind off, once you've completed the length that you want for the bag, which is about the 22 inches, you're going to insert your hook into this, the first chain space, just like you did at the repetition of the row one or row two. Once you've cast on two loops on your hook, you're going to close in a single crochet. So you're going to yarn over and pull that loop through the two that you already had on your hook. Next, you're gonna go into this, uh, the Tunisian stitch three together, and you're just gonna stitch them all three together, cast on a loop. Once you have both loops on your hook, you're gonna close in a single crochet. And then go into the chain space, 
and a single crochet. So repeat this in all of the stitches along the top of the bag. Now, if once you complete the bind off row, you see that the fabric is a little bit wavy, that just means that your stitches are a little bit wider than at least the ones that I stitched, because mine wasn't wavy at the top. If that's the case, pull out all of the stitches for the bind off and work only with the vertical stitches. So omit all of the stitching for the cast on. So everything that's in that chain space, just omit all of those stitches and work only the Tunisian Simple Stitch cast on and the Tunisian Simple Stitch three together cast on and continue to work that as a single crochet. Okay, so once you've already crocheted the length that you want for your fabric, so I've already sewn this part, but I'll show you why here in a minute. But once you've completed the length that you want for your fabric, you are going to fold it in half and then we're gonna start stitching up the sides. Now, the reason I stitched it beforehand was to show you what that seam is going to look like. I made the mistake of stitching this up here, so that's why that's visible, but otherwise it's a fairly invisible seam. Um, and I did use, as you can see, the darker uh, yarn to stitch that, and it's not very noticeable. All right, so we're gonna do the same stitch, and we're gonna do this on this side. The first thing you're gonna need is your yarn or tapestry needle, and I double up the yarn like this and just make a knot at the bottom. This is so I have a little bit more yarn to reinforce the stitch. Um, I'm gonna be starting here at the bottom. So once I've made my knot, make sure that you line everything up. So try to line it up as best as you can. If this, if you're not quite certain, if you've lined it up correctly, you can always start stitching here at the top and just work your way down. That works out fine as well. Uh, but for this one, I'm starting at the bottom. So really you can do whatever you want, but we're gonna begin just a simple stitch right in the center so the centermost stitch once you've lined everything up so it looks like that one's it let's be sure yep and we're going to pull that through now the stitch we're going to use i don't know if you're going to be able to see it too too clearly here but if you can't i'll show you again up here if i need to but once you have everything lined up you're going to be using the side stitches so right in here right in here right in here and you're going to insert your needle like this so it's in every single one of these stitches along the side so beginning on one side whichever side you want here i'll start on this one since it's lighter i'm going to skip this first stitch simply because my thread came out on this side so i'm going to skip this first little stitch and i'm going to insert my needle into the second one so i'm going to go in through the bottom part and then up through the top like this and then just pull through and then I'm going to do the same on the other side. This one, I don't necessarily have to skip that first stitch because my thread is on this side. So I'm going to grab this first stitch right here and then go on this side and then pull through. And then I'm not going to tighten it. So you see what I'm doing next. So this is the stitch where the yarn's coming out. You're going to insert your yarn or your not yarn what is this thing called your needle into this same stitch so right where this yarn comes out you're going to insert your needle into that stitch and pull up on the next one so like this and pull through and then repeat this on the other side so here's the yarn you're going to insert your needle into that same stitch and pull this up on the other side so like this and pull through And then after a few stitches, you can go through and tighten it. Let's get that out of the way. This yarn is a little bit fuzzy and it's kind of thick. So this one's kind of difficult to do it with. Usually if you're using a smoother yarn, it's a lot easier to just kind of pull this and tighten it up, but give it a nice tightening right here and then just continue stitching. So work a few stitches, tighten a few stitches, tighten a few stitches, tighten. I would do maybe like five or six stitches and then tighten the yarn. If you have too big a space, and then you try to tighten it, it becomes a little more difficult. So do about five or six stitches, tighten the yarn, and then continue. You're gonna repeat this stitch all the way to the end and then just knot it up and weave in your ends. If you need to see how to weave in ends, stick around, I'll show you how to do this once I completely sew up this side of the bag. So I'll leave you to do that. I'll see you again in just a moment. All right, so once you get to the end, so this is kind of what it looks like. And then when you pull on the thread, all your stitches tighten up, yeah, that's kind of satisfying. All right, so make sure you pull on this so it's not too tight, and there you go. Now, what happens if one side is a little bit higher than the other? 
chaos ensues. That's what. The world ends, explosions everywhere, we fall into despair, nothing. Nothing happens. So you just give it a stitch. Because I have gotten that in other projects and people are like, oh my gosh, nothing happens, guys. It's okay. You just line it up the best you can, just like that. And then you stitch and that's it. Nobody will notice. It's a drawstring bag. No one will notice. If it bothers you that much, then pull out all your stitches and stitch it again. But there we go. But I had to make that note because it has happened in other projects and <sighs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I got, I got a few angry uh, emails about that one time. All right, so once you've lined up your edges and you're done, you've stitched everything together, you're going to knot this up. So pull this through so you make a little loop. Knot here, like that, and knot with like a K, not knot, N-O-T. All right, we're gonna make a double knot. Like so. Oh my gosh, this yarn is like super thick. Okay, once that's all nice and tight, we're gonna weave in ends. So for those of you that needed to see this, use the inside of your stitching and you're going to use the return pass. So I'm gonna stitch just a little bit further down so I'm not at the very end. So just give it a quick stitch, get a little bit further in, like so. And then using the stitch for the return pass, for this one, I really am just gonna go back and forth. There are some of them in which I go in a bit of a square shape, but this one with the thread uh, and the, the yarn, excuse me, being so thick, um, I don't think it's gonna have any problem unraveling at all. So we're just gonna stitch on one side and then stitch down and then go the other direction. And then just do this as many times as you feel comfortable doing it. Um, I don't have a lot of yarn left so I might only be able to do this twice, but go the other direction and then stitch back up and then back across. And this one is gonna be a bit tight there. There we go. And there you go. Now we're just gonna cut our yarn. So tighten it, cut that, and there you go. So there's our bag. We're ready to go. Now we need to make the, I guess they're the drawstrings. <laughs> I guess that's what they're called. All right, so here's one side, here's the other. Now let's make these little thingies. All right, so let's make these little drawstring cord things. <laughs> now for this, as you can see, they're really very colorful, but that's because I used uh, the very, I used a very fine thread. So this is also another yarn from Darn Good Yarn, but these are all the leftover yarns I had. So that's why I said you needed extra yarn. Um, I used four threads because this is a size one fingering yarn. So, oh, and look, here are the four colors I used. So I used four different colors um, and I used them simultaneously. So if it makes it a lot easier for you to use, you can always kind of twist them a bit um, and it'll be just, you're going to use it as one thread. So twist it around like that, use it as one thread and you're good to go. Um, otherwise you can use a medium worsted yarn, a size three, a sport, whatever you want. Like really, this is your project. Just get creative with it. But um for the sample I'm showing you right now, I am gonna use a medium worsted yarn. So this is a number four yarn. Um, and yeah, just the same 5.5 millimeter hook. First thing you're gonna need is a long tail end of yarn and I left a 90 inch tail end. So 90 inches is about 229 centimeters. So here's that tail end, it is super long. So it is about 2.5 times the length of the cord that you want. And our cord is gonna be about uh, 28 inches, which is about 71 centimeters. So once you've got your yarn uh, or you've left that long tail end, here's the working yarn. So I'm going to leave that thread on top and there's the tail end, which is going to be at the bottom. First thing you're going to do is you're going to, you're going to grab your hook. You're going to place it on top of your yarn like so, and then you're going to wrap the bottom thread of your yarn around the hook. So wrap it up towards the top and then pull it down towards the bottom. So it completely wraps around your hook like this. So let's do one more time. You lay your um, hook flat on the yarn and wrap the bottom thread around your hook. Once you've got this, you're going to chain one. So you're gonna wrap this top yarn, so your working yarn, wrap it around your hook once and pull it through that loop. This is going to make a slip knot at the bottom. So there you go. All right, now to begin the, I guess the cord, uh, you're going to wrap the bottom yarn around your hook towards the front. 
So this one right here, which is the tail end, you're gonna wrap it around your hook like this in front. So I'll do it again. Wrap it in the front, leave that loop on your hook, and using the top yarn, you're gonna yarn over and pull through both of those loops. So you're going to single crochet using the top thread. So again, you wrap the bottom yarn, so the tail end yarn, and you yarn over and pull through two using the top yarn. So tail end, you wrap around, yarn over with the working yarn and pull through two. And that's it. That cord is really, really simple. You can make this using any yarn you have. So however thick a cord you want to go ahead and just use whatever yarn. Um, so this is what it's gonna look like. I crocheted a total of 90 rows. So that gave me the length of about 28 inches. And once you finish your cord, it's gonna look like this. Now, this is a really, really stretchy cord. So feel free to adjust it if you want to. Um, but, you know, remember that it does stretch. So uh, adjust it, however, I'm just gonna stop here. All right, so once you finish, you're just gonna select one of the threads, doesn't matter which one of yarn, and you're going to chain one. So I'm just gonna get this long thread, wrap it around my hook, chain one. So pull the top loop through the bottom loop and pull it all the way through. This is gonna make a knot at the bottom and then when you tighten it, you'll have a little knot here at the bottom. You're gonna weave in the short tail end once you finish sewing your project onto your work, but leave a long tail end. You're gonna use this long tail end to sew the cord onto your uh, bag. So you're gonna use it to sew it right down here at the bottom. So repeat the same steps to make both cords, sew them onto the bottom of the bag, and then we'll move on to the tassels and everything else. All right, so once you stitched on your little straps, we're going to thread these through. Now, the easiest way I find to do this is just kind of, well, I'll just show you. All right, so pick a place that's about a quarter of the way in. So divide this by half and then pick a place like right around here on this side, so right there, and then maybe on this side right here. So just pick a place. And what you're gonna do is just push the cord through towards the inside of the bag, like so. So here we go. That's what it looks like. We're gonna do the same on this other side. All right, and there we go. So this is the back of the bag. Let's turn it around to the front. And here's where we're gonna uh, fold this into like an accordion fold and then pull the cords through towards the front. So just line up on, line up the edge. So see how it's on the side right here? And I push that through so that it's across from this cord. So I'm gonna fold that like this and then I'm gonna fold this side like that. So just an accordion fold. It doesn't have to be perfect, but you know, just try to keep it somewhat similar on both sides. So you're gonna thread your cord through. So here's the inside of the bag. Just thread it through to the side you fold in. And then when you fold on the other side, line it up so that it's across from where you threaded your cord. So like that. So I'm gonna thread the cord through this side. So towards the inside of the bag. So it looks like this. And then again, towards the front of the bag. Like that. So now the cord hangs on the front of the bag. You can put it a little more um, towards the center if you want, but that's up to you. Move it around and just kind of lay it wherever it is that you think it looks good. And you're gonna do the same on this other side. So we accordion fold and then thread through one side so towards the outside of the bag, like that. And then again, towards the inside of the bag. I still have to take photos of this for the pattern, so I'm not lining it up perfectly. So I'm gonna have to pull this out again in just a moment. All right, so once you've threaded this through, you've gone out through the front, this is what it'll look like. So when you open your bag, it'll look like this. And then when you close it, it'll close it up like that only you'll be wearing the straps so it won't uh, shrink this much. All right, now once you've lined it up, you're good to go. You're just going to line up the edges of the cords and make a knot. And there it is. So there is your nice summery drawstring bag. 
Now, for those of you that want to make the tassels, stick around. I'll show you how to make those here in just a moment. All right, now for those of you that want to make the tassel, uh, the easiest way, at least, that I found to do this is if you don't have a tool and you don't want to get one of those tools, like for the pom-poms or the tassels or whatever, just use a book. So I use a book. It's about this big. So it's not a very wide book. It's just a little notebook, journal thing. You're going to line up your yarn so that it's at the end, so like this, and then you're going to wrap it around your book. Depending on how thick your yarn is and how thick a tassel you want, you just go around and count every time you go around. So count at the bottom or wherever the, the thread begins. So right here I have one. I normally go around about like 15 times, but that's a personal preference. You can do whatever you want. So that's one, two, three, four, five. Ah. All right, so here's 15. So this is what it'll look like. This is half of the thickness of the tassel. Remember that you have threads on the other side. So you can gauge about how thick it's gonna be just by looking on this side. So remember this is half of it. Once you've gone around however many times you want, make sure you count it since you're gonna make two tassels or however many if you're doing these for another project. Go through, cut the yarn at the bottom, and then you're gonna cut another thread of yarn. You're gonna use this to sew the tassel onto your project. So I'm gonna leave it about that long. Leave this here on the side. We're gonna pull our tassel off the book. Keep your thumb here in the middle so that you have this loop like this. All right, then what you're gonna do is you're gonna pull this thread right through the center of the yarn. So it's like this. And then double knot it. So one, two. You're gonna use these to sew. So just leave them here on the side. Next, you're just gonna tug on this and you're gonna cut this bottom part. So just cut through the yarn. So my scissors. So just put the scissors and then pull. And then just cut through. Oh, this is quite difficult to do when you're looking through a camera. <laughs> all right, there we go. So once these are all cut like this, you're gonna grab another thread of yarn. Just to make it easier to see, I'm gonna grab a different color. So this is just the last bit that I had left from the bag. So line it up, leave about a thumb's width of space up here. And in case you don't know, I have two different size thumbs. <laughs> I'm just gonna do the bigger thumb <laughs> and leave a bit more space. I know it's so weird, right? But that's just the way it is. I've got like my mom's, or not my mom's, my dad's side of the family has this funky stubby thumb and my mom's side doesn't. And I got both. Why? I don't even know, <laughs> but it's all right. Okay. So I'll hold your yarn like this, and then you're gonna wrap it around a few times. So let's see, I'm gonna go, that's one, two, three, four, five. It's about as much as I wanna do. There we go, let's tighten it. Oh, there we go. All right, and then just knot it over here and you're good to go. If you're using the same color thread, um, it's gonna be very easy to hide the tail ends and you won't have to like sew them through or anything like that. Uh, because I was trying to make this a little easier to show you guys, I used a different color yarn. So if you use the same color, once you go through, you can cut the tail end like down here or wherever it is you want. Then you're going to grab a hook, grab something smaller than what you'd used before, and then just push that through so it pops up on this other side. So it's kind of big, so I don't know if I can. Yeah, that's going to be too hard. Pop it through on the side, grab these two threads, and then just pull them through so that they come in through the back side. And there you go. You just go through, cut it, line up all these edges, make sure you cut them so they're nice and neat. And that's it. Then you go through, use these threads to attach your tassel onto your bag. So you'll have one tassel on this side, and then I made one for the, the Spanish tutorial, and there's the other tassel. And there you go. So that was our tutorial for today. Hope you enjoyed it and you learned something new. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, hit the subscribe button. I try to post videos, well, as often as I can. If you'd like to see more of my work, check out my Instagram page. That's at mode.bespoke. And if you want to see the pattern or, you know, for this project, any other project, you can go to the website. That's modebespoke.com. All of the links are down in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you all again in the next video.